<laughs> Fortunate to know him. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So I interviewed uh, Professor Mark Solms, who's actually a guy who wrote a book called The uh, the Hidden Spring, trying to find out where consciousness comes from. And I don't think he means that in a philosophical way. Yeah, <laughs> he means yeah. this in a neuroscience way of trying Which to understand. We, we still don't know the answer. It's a big open question. It is, but he talks about homeostasis and how it works within us. And there seems to be this like, there's this certain place where pleasure and pain, where we're in between it and we survive this way. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the universe has somewhat of a form of a homeostasis existence with a zero energy here. It's like you mentioned, um, if I'm not mistaken, in your previous interviews, it's zero energy, but there's. Uh, maybe you can describe this mathematics. There's like a thirty percent something of, of. Well, the total the total energy of the universe. We think it all we, as we measure it seems to be precisely zero. And, and energy is not well defined in general relativity. I should say that. But class the classical Newtonian energy appears to be t zero. But 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 that doesn't mean there's nothing that has energy in it. It says there's a balance of things. But and and so the universe as we measure it is is spatially flat which is another way of saying it has zero total classical energy. Uh, the universe we measured is spatially flat. That's not meaning, doesn't mean it's like a piece of paper. <laughs> um, it, it, that's a two-dimensional flat universe. You get that all the time. <laughs> yeah. A three-dimensional flat universe is just one that the universe you always thought you live in, where the X, Y, and Z axes are perpendicular to each other and, this, and point in the same direction in all of space. In a curved universe, the X, Y, Z axes can point here in, in, in one place, and then when you're over here, they oop, I should get... You, over here, they point in a different direction. That's because right. space is curved. But in a flat universe, everywhere you go, they point in the same direction. That's all. It's the universe we always thought we lived in. But we can measure that. We can measure looking for curvature of space. And on large scales, it appears it's not curved. Uh, and um, and so the universe is flat. But but in order to make it flat, gravitation, you have to have a certain amount of energy. Uh, and And we used to think that there was enough matter to make the universe flat. And I was, when I was first studying dark matter, when I was a young uh, researcher and assistant professor, and we th I, I, one of the, my big research areas was to look at this dark matter, which is when we look at our galaxy and all galaxies, most of the mass of those galaxies can't be attributed by stars, in, as can't be attributed to stars or even hot gas. It's, it's something that's invisible. It doesn't shine. And we call that dark matter, and it's true. And, and, and they are dominated by dark matter, and... We can inf measure that amount of material by measuring the gravitational attraction of things and the way light bends and all sorts of ways. We're convinced that that there's probably five to ten times more stuff out there than meets the eye. And it's probably, in fact, the strong arguments that suggest it's a new type of elementary particle, which is why I got involved in the game as an elementary particle physicist with, you know, proposing dark matter particles and experiments to look for it, etc., so we thought, okay, well, that's it. There's enough dark matter to make the universe flat. But then it became clearer and clearer the more we measured that there wasn't enough dark matter. There's only 30% of the amount of stuff needed to make the universe flat. And in fact, in 1995, uh, a colleague of mine from the University of Chicago and I wrote a paper saying, it doesn't work. There's not enough dark matter to make the universe flat. And there's all these different tests you can do. And looking at all the observations, the only way you could have a flat universe is if 70% of the energy in the universe resided in empty space. Mm. If empty space itself had energy. Now, at the time we proposed that, we didn't believe it. Uh, I did, it I, my own feeling was it meant that some of the observations were wrong, and it was a way to demonstrate that the observations were wrong. But in fact, it turned out to be exactly right. 70% of the energy of the universe resides in empty space. And the way you could test that is if you put the energy in empty space, it's gravitationally repulsive, if you put energy in empty space, it, 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 it blows, it doesn't suck. And that causes the expansion of the universe to speed up faster and faster and faster. And in 2008 and 2009, uh, two sets of uh, uh, astronomers were measuring the expansion rate of the universe and discovered it was speeding up. And the amount by which it was speeding up was precisely the amount we said was necessary to, to, to be in empty space. And they won the Nobel Prize for that discovery. Whew.